as Mike said, what happens when you need something more than just moving tasks and assigning them to folks? What happens if you need a scheduling engine? And that's what Microsoft Project for the Web is designed to accomplish. It came out this past October, and it is available right now, but not yet in the government community cloud. And I see a lot of government folks on the call today. Just wanted to call that out. It's coming soon to your tenant. But how to get to Project for the Web is actually quite easy. Just as Josh illustrated with Planner, it's part of your Office 365 environment. And you can just go to it by hitting Project in the Chooser menu anywhere in Office 365 that you are. And now I get into Project. What happens is I get a page loaded called Project Home. This is going to show me all my favorite projects, all my roadmaps that I've created, and the ability to go ahead and create a new one called the New Blank Project. So I'm going to click on that, and instantaneously I get taken to a new project with, without a title that I can get started with working. And from there, I can give it a title, and we're going to call it the Home Classroom, because a lot of us parents are faced with having to create a home classroom uh, for our kids that are home from school um, during this period of time. And I'm going to give that a start date of 4-6, so my home classroom project is underway. And what I can do now is basically start adding tasks to my home classroom project. So in order to set up a home classroom, we need to clean out the dining room, for example. We might need to set up the computers. We might need to hang the whiteboard. This sounds like somebody who's been through this recently. Uh, speaking from experience, Mike, <laughs> you might need to get the headphones. This is very key for the for the parents. Um, we might need to get a power cord or a, get a extension cord. And you know that's uh, that's going to be it. And then we have uh, we have our technology set up. And that involves logging into certain tools online, like Schoolology, which all of us are becoming very familiar with, um, iReady, and maybe Edmodo. Now, in order to make sure we represent a hierarchy here, what we can do is we can indent tasks, can make things a subtask of another, so we have a, a task list here that shows hierarchy. We can go as many as 10 levels deep on this. Um, if I wanted to add a task in, I could do that easily as well um, by inserting a task above and saying this is called room setup. And then if I wanted to, I could indent all of these over and make them subtasks of room setup. Now, as you can see, I'm creating a mini project plan here. It kind of looks and feels like Microsoft Project, but it may be a little bit easier for some of you to use, especially those of you that are occasional or part-time project managers and really don't need the full power of Microsoft Project at your disposal. So also in Project for the Web and with Planner, it's all tied to Microsoft modern Office 365 groups. So if I already have a group, I could add this project to that group. If I want to create a new group on the fly, I could do that too, called Home Classroom. But I already have a group, and we don't want to duplicate or create more groups than we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Innovative E Project Demo and include this project in that group. When I do that, I'm going to get all my team members, all eight of them, on my project team, um, and they'll have access to this project plan. And I also can assign them work to do. So if I wanted to go ahead and assign Josh a task and maybe assign Mike something, I can do that as part of my existing Office 365 group. I might want to even assign durations to these particular things, like one day, one day just for an example, but I want, might want to actually view more data and see something more, so I, I'm going to include effort. I can also include percent complete, a start date, 
and a finish date for my tasks. And then I can also include dependency, like depends on, or depends, dependents after. So I'm getting predecessor, successor relationships there. And I have something called bucket, which is a categorization. Right now I only have one kind of category, but I can add more if I want. I even have something called outline number. Now what I can do with these things is I can move them around. So I can make the project into something really usable and workable for me the way I want to see it. I like to have percent complete over here on the left. And then I also like to get my start date over there. And that yeah, looks pretty good. So now I'm my project plan the way I like it. And I can start working my project plan. I can start making things um, percent complete. I can just type it in there for halfway done. I can type any amount in there. And now I'm starting to work on these things. I can also go ahead and assign tasks to additional people if I want and really flesh out my project plan. But the power of Project for the Web is also the board view. Kind of looks and feels a lot like Planner, but I have a scheduling engine now behind the scenes. I can bucketize things. I can say, these are my facilities, activities. These might be technology. I can bucketize things however I want. It's a custom field. And then if I want to switch this to progress, I have a Kanban board. So again, similar to Planner, I'm able to move cards around the screen. So if I wanted to move get headphones to in progress, I can do that. It's going to mark that as 50% by default. And then I can go into it and I can change that to 75%. I also have a, a simple effort calculation here. Completed work plus remaining work equals total work. I can add a dependency and it gives me some suggestions. So I'm going to pick set up the computers. And then I can even assign it to someone right from here. So that's pretty cool because now I have my grid view and I don't need to switch tools to get a board view. Also, and probably perhaps most impressive, is the timeline view. This is a Gantt chart, um, but it's a more interactive Gantt chart than you've ever seen in project before. So I can create tasks, I can move them around, I can extend them. I can make them start on different dates if I wanted to, move them out. I can even go, and once I assign a few more resources here, I'm going to actually put a, put a couple of hours associated with this one, maybe this one. Just add a few more pieces of data here, flip back over to my timeline. I might want to create some predecessor successor relationships right here from the timeline so I can click and drag and do that. And now that just pushed that out because of that relationship. I can create what the meaningful relationship between these tasks are with just a drag and a drop of the mouse. If there's any completion on the tasks, it's not going to push them out. So you'd have to zero that out to have that move. I can zoom in and zoom out of my of my Gantt chart as well, so that I can really work with the data, um, identify my relationships and my constraints. So with one tool, I have a grid. I have the ability to have a Kanban board, and I have a timeline. So Project for the Web really empowers the occasional project manager to have something more than planner. It's like a step up. But what if I wanted to use Project for the Web with Teams? Well, no problem. 
you can use Project for the Web right here within a Teams channel by surfacing a schedule tab and referencing Project for the Web a specific schedule within it. So here I have this example of contract management. This is the channel in Teams, and I've got my contract management project right here. I can flip between board view, timeline view, just like I was doing in Project for the Web natively, but now I'm just doing it contextually inside Teams. And that means that I can chat about this particular project with my teammates. We can collaborate on the project in real time. What's more, I have a complete reporting solution available with Project for the Web in Power BI. All of the data that's going into Project for the Web is coming out in these great interactive dashboards. So all my projects are here, my progress against those projects, how many do I have, what's the total effort, the amount completed and remaining, and there's pie charts and graphs that show me what's going on across my portfolio. I didn't really do anything to create these reports except for load this dashboard from GitHub into Power BI and surface it in a tab in Teams. The only thing I'm really doing to create these reports is working on my project schedules and creating data. I also have a really great portfolio timeline which shows me all of my projects that are going on, their progress against the plan, some different metadata associated with them, and I have the ability to narrow down the view by just using this really fun interactive slider. I have portfolio milestones, resource board. So I'm, now that I'm assigning people tasks in my project plan, I know how much effort those things take, and I know how much progress they've made toward them. So I can see who's assigned to what, what they've completed, and what's remaining. If I click on an area of Power BI chart, it'll actually filter that report for the data that I clicked on. Those of you that have used Power BI before are familiar with this concept, but it's always impressive to people that haven't seen it before. And then I have resource assignments. I can see what people are working on across the board, regardless of what project it is or who's managing the project. I have a task overview where I can see what tasks are happening, their start finish dates, any progress against those tasks. And it's just really easy to create this because you're just populating your, your project schedules with data and you just loaded it as part of your team's channel. We can help you get started with this if you're interested. Just contact us after the webinar. One other innovative way I thought you could use Project for the Web and Planner together would be to create two different tabs in Teams. One for the project plan and one for an issues list. So we can use Planner as an issues list and just have our issues here in a simple Kanban board. So combining the two concepts together into one thing and using the tools strategically and collaboratively together in teams alongside contextually to other conversations that are going on. I wanted to show you something else that's really actually a huge development in the space, and it's the ability to co-author a project plan with another. So in traditional Microsoft project circles, we didn't have the ability, ability to both come into a project schedule at the same time and make changes. So I'm gonna go into the contract management project, which is here on my team, and I'm gonna show you how Josh is also in the same project, and he's gonna move something from not started to in progress, and we're gonna see him do it without moving my mouse. So go ahead and do that, Josh, if you would, please. Sure, I think I can start the contract review. How about that? that? Today. So now Josh and I are working on the same project at the same time, and we're making changes to these tasks, and we can see each other's changes happen right before our eyes. So I'm gonna switch back to grid view, 
And even if Josh wanted to go in and complete a few tasks and check them off, I'd be able to see that he's doing that by seeing him get crossed out and the boxes get checked. We don't have to go through any workflow to do this. We don't have to basically do anything but, but just be in the same project schedule at the same time and make changes. And some of you might be thinking, whoa, hang on a minute. There's pros and cons to that, and you're right. There's different tools you would use for different reasons. This is a collaborative project management tool, really for simple project plans and schedules and the occasional use of a, of a project manager that's not really a PMP, and it's not a very complex project. Thank mm -hmm. you.